So today's video is going to be an updated Lush perfume collection because as you well know, if you are a Lush fan like me, Lush just came up with some new perfumes and I'm so excited. <laughs> like I'm so excited. So yeah. Last time I actually started with my oldest perfumes. I made my last perfume collection Lush thing from like fucking three years ago. So I'm gonna start with my newest perfumes. So from the brand new collection that they just came out with in the States, I know they had this in the UK for a little bit before, I got three, well, yeah, three uh, solids. I actually got Amelie May, which is a really lovely floral. It's rose, lavender, and ylang ylang. Ylang ylang is such an underrated floral. I fucking love it. Like, it's so good. And then I got What Would Love Do, which is also floral, but it is lavender and tangerine and tonka. So it's a bit sweeter, a bit citrusier. They're both really nice for summer. What do you know? Florals for summer. Revolutionary. And then I also got cardamom and coffee, which is the complete opposite of those because it's like cocoa and vanilla and like weed. I think it's pronounced like O-U-D-H. It's like smoky, not tobacco-y. It's got a coffee-ish smell to it, but it also has a nice like cardamom, car cardamom coffee, just like the name says. But yeah, I really, really like these three. I'm surprised I didn't actually like all of them. I'm home. I wasn't digging. I don't know what it was, but it felt too sickly sweet to me. I don't know. But these ones, I really, really like. I'm super excited that they finally came out with new perfumes because I feel like the Lush perfume collection got really fucking stale. And they like redesigned the packaging so many times without actually like coming out with new perfumes in the US. It's like, come on guys, Jesus. I just want new perfumes. Like, as somebody who doesn't have a bathtub, perfumes are my lush guilty pleasure, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you will soon see. The next two I got a couple of months ago, because actually a couple of my friends got to go to the perfume summit that they had in Texas, I believe. I used to work at Lush, if you don't know that. But a bunch of my friends, former coworkers, got to go, and they were like, oh, if anybody wants us to pick them up any perfumes, let me know. So I was like, Ariel. So I got Rentless, which is a lovely, smoky, oh. It reminds me of um, Experimenter. Oh, it's, it's straight up Experimenter. It's like spicy, smoky, it's, I don't know what, Pogo Stemmen Cablin, no idea what that is. Dipteryx Odorata Seed. Don't know what that was. Uh, it has grapefruit in it. Um, and anise. So yeah, it's very, I can get the anise and the grapefruit, but I don't know what those other things are actually are, but it's other smells. But if you liked Experimenter, you would like Rentless. It's dope. And they actually have this in the stores now. Ah, but I got this before they got to the stores. And then uh, Love is one that I actually used to own in a teeny tiny little vial. Oh God, it's so good. Ugh. It's like if Wash That Man right out of my hair was like citrusy, cause it's jasmine as uh, normal. Jasmine, bergamot, rose, alang alang. That, there's that alang alang again. Lemongrass? Yeah, so it's it's citrusy, it's very bright, but it has that kind of floral undertone. So the two of them mixed together kind of gives it like a bite. I don't know, almost a bitterness, but it's really, really lovely. It's so uplifting, like lemongrass, grapefruit. I just, I love these two. They're so polar opposite of each other, but I am obsessed with both of them. So I think the next one I got was uh, Yuzu and Coco, which was uh, a kitchen exclusive. And this, it smells just like Yuzu and Coco. It's very sickly sweet, not sickly, it's coconutty. It's coconut. So I have to wear this one sparingly. This is why I have not gone through a ton of it because I actually like the fragrance better in a bath product than I do as a perfume. This mixes as well with like straight up citrus. Um, because this is so strong in like the sweet coconut scent, but it's bergamot, cocoa absolute, tonka, grapefruit oil. It's far more of the tonka and cocoa, but it, it smells like coconut. So I love it still. I, I'm glad I have it. And then two uh, limited edition perfumes. <laughs> I'm so sad about this one. So this is Rose Jam. Um, this one I have about half of the bottle left. This one was when they first started doing the Lush Kitchen uh, exclusive perfumes. And this, when did I get this? 2013, used by uh, <laughs> 1510? Oh, right, October 15th, because it's British. Honestly, perfumes, it's just like, it's alcohol and essential oils. It's roast jam, it's exactly how you think it is. It's honestly a little more citrusy than 
any other rose jam scent um, like the rose jam shower gel and the rose argan body conditioner um, are stronger in the rose and the other sweet scents in here but this one has more of a lemon kind of undertone to it so it's very bright it's very citrusy <laughs> Count how many times I've taken the lid off this fucking perfume. It's lovely, it's great. Um, the geranium helps to brighten it up too, so it's not a very like old lady scent, but I'm glad I have it. I'm very glad I have it. It's like, yeah, half full. A little, little bit more than half full. I use it very sparingly, very sparingly. And then one I should have been using more sparingly than I guess I have been. Um, next time it comes in the damn kitchen, I need it, cause this is Lord of Misrule, and I only have this much left. <sighs> It's like a quarter of the bottle left. December 1st of 2014. Made by Lush, uh, 29 High Street in Pool. Patchouli, black pepper, vanilla. That's that's all this needs. And it's it's so, it's so it's my favorite perfume of all time. It's so good. Ugh, it's so, so good. Like I can't, like I need, to, I need to save this because if I ever run out of this and I don't have it anymore, I will be very, very sad. So if anybody ever sees that there's Lord of Misrule in the exclusives, fucking tweet at me because I will buy it on the spot. <laughs> I will pay for all the shipping by myself because I need this to never be out of my life because it is that good. At least it's springtime and I'm not wearing it as much. <laughs> now I'm in no particular order because I honestly don't know when I bought all of these. The smell of Weather Turning is actually one that I used to have in a, actually I have this in both things. I have this in a solid and a liquid. I like it better as a liquid. This is one of the older packaging. I bought this, when did I buy this? Made in 2016, used by 2020, uh, maybe. This is, it's very, indicative of the name. This is one of those perfumes that really transform on your skin because it is so multi-layered and so weird. It's oak wood, beeswax, bay, peppermint, mint, and chamomile. It's such a weird scent, but it fucking works. It's not one of those tobacco-y manly scents, which don't get me wrong, I love those, but this one's a bit, I don't know, it's, it's really green. It's really cool, like mysterious. It's one of those ones where you're like, what is that? Like, it's such a good scent. I love it so much. Ugh, if you like grass, um, try this. It's good. Another solid I actually have from when they first repackaged the solids. How many times has Lush repackaged their fucking solid perfumes? This is all good things. This one is, I believe, Cade and stuff. It's like a warm, warm and smoky. It's really nice. I, I, I really like this perfume. Uh, I find that this formulation of the solids doesn't last as long as I would like, but I got this one and then I also got Death and Decay, which is somewhere. I might actually buy that in a bottle because it's so good. Death and Decay smells like dead lilies, in case you didn't know, but um, they still have all good things and Death and Decay in the stores. Couple of other bottles. Uh, the last of the um, newer packaging, I have our uh, Sun, which is, this is doing weird stuff. I should probably just get rid of this because it's got like, oh yeah, the shelf life on this was far shorter than everything else. Why was the shelf life on this so short? Two years? I haven't worn this in like a really long time, so still smells like citrus. Like Sun smells straight up just like lemon and orange. Like that's exactly what it smells like. It's not the most complex fragrance, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's Brazilian orange uh, mimosa and sandalwood. I don't smell the sandalwood to be honest. I just smell orange. It's good, but this does not last on me very long at all, at all. I don't know what it is with like straight up citrus scents. They do not last on me. And also this dropper was annoying as fuck. I hate these droppers. I hate them. The smaller droppers on the other hand were fine because it's not as huge. This is Smuggler Soul, which is another of my favorite, favorite underrated Lush fragrances. It is all the sandalwood. <laughs> all of it. My old roommate even really liked this because I had something else that smelled like this and he used it all the time and I was like, dude, stop using it. But it's it's great. It's a really lovely manly scent, but it's not, I don't follow those rules, honestly. Like I'm very femme, I'm very feminine, but like when it comes to scents, fuck, I use man smells all the time. Like what even is a man smell? Hmm, hmm. I like to smell like aftershave. This is good. Smell of her soul is great. And then the last uh, newer bottle is Curbside Violet. And I actually bought this from the Lush Kitchen originally, um, and now they have it in the stores. But it smells like Sunny Day, the hair spray. Do they even have that anymore? I don't even know. But it's Violet. Violet, Jasmine, and Lang Lang. Again, with the Lang Lang. I mean, this is very Violet-y. Like, it's 
very violet -y. It smells like flowers. So if you don't like flowers, you won't like this. It's a very green type floral scent. Like it's not overly like floral. It's, it's, it's hard to explain. You know, it's very grassy. It's a grassy floral, but it's great. It's really good. And now on to all of my old ass perfumes. Um, these are all really, really old. <laughs> Don't judge me. I have Smell of Weather turning in a solid, so. Um, I have Lust, which also I might have to buy in a liquid at some point. God, you're still so good. I got over this scent for a long time, but like, man, it's great. <laughs> used by 2014. <laughs> That's funny. Karma. It's too sweet for me now. Honestly, Karma's too sweet for me. It's still, it's a great scent for other things. I just don't like it as a perfume anymore. It's way too sweet, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know, the sweet orange oil, it's just so sweet. If you like sweet smells, Karma's your friend. Breath of God, however, this was one that I used to hate, but I love it now. Oh God, I forgot how much I loved Breath of God. It's such a calming scent. It's like minty. I don't know, it's, it's, it's a very, very unique fragrance and it's very different to anything else that they have in the store. On some people, it smells horrible. It's one of those fragrances that will change depending on your body chemistry, like straight up. Try this in the store, in the solid and in the liquid because both of them smell different on me, honestly. So it's good though, it's really good. I love flush perfumes. I feel like I own all of them except, except Dirty, to be fair. Like Dirty's the only one that I don't own, but I kind of want it now, anyway. I have Imogen Rose and the old spray bottles, which is honestly the most convenient for traveling. Not gonna lie. Old lady rose smell. It's exactly how you think it is. It's it's the OG rose <laughs> from Lush. It's, it's a good rose scent, not gonna lie. It's just very different than every other floral scent that they've been putting out lately. So it's a little bit, it's an old school fragrance. Um, I have Vanillery, which is the cleanest of all of the bottles that I have, this little spritzy bottles. It's great. It's a little simple for me. I actually might spray that. It's really nice though. It's really warm and it would mix really well with a lot of other scents. This mixes well with sun, actually. The, the vanilla and jasmine with the citrus of sun are really nice. So yeah, I like Vanillery. Again, it's, it's, it's a complicated vanilla scent. Like it's not just straight up vanilla. Like it's got kind of like that, I don't know. What, what's underneath there? Is it jasmine? Vanilla, jasmine, and tonka. And then the last but not least, honestly, what is this? What are you? It's like brown. The smell of freedom. That's what this is. I was like, what is this? I was trying to read the label because the label is completely off. It still smells good though. It's just real strong. Smell of freedom is uh, one of the old, 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 old fragrance that Lush had in the stores. This was probably the closest thing to 2543, so that's why I keep it, because 2543 was another of my favorite fragrances from Lush that got discontinued and they like never brought back. So, um, Smell of Freedom is good, and that's why I still have it. I have so many Lush perfumes. I have a lot, like I have a lot. This is a majority of my perfume collection, so don't judge me, please. Yeah, so those were all my uh, Lush perfumes. It's my updated collection. So other people collect bath bombs, I collect perfumes. Perfumes last much longer than bath bombs, so I consider that to be an investment. For today's song of the day, it is a desktop philosopher in my holiness by Belgian Fog. This band, I actually just finished working on their episode of Band in Seattle and it's going to air uh, soon or it already has aired depending on when I upload this video. It's a really great song. It's like kind of synth poppy, rocky. Definitely check out that song. Check out all of their music. Belgian Fog, desktop philosopher in my holiness. It is very relevant to right now, so uh, if you can pay attention to the lyrics, do that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell to get notified if you want to see when my videos are uploaded because apparently YouTube doesn't give a shit if regular subscribers see people's videos. If you want to see extra content, check out my Patreon. I upload vlogs and weekly live streams and bloopers there as well as some fun extra stuff. And thank you to my patrons already. You guys are amazing and let me know if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.